<laughs> the great Bobby C. could not be with us this morning, but I, the patriarch of the Adams family, Gomez Adams, at your service, is here to fill in on this beautifully spooky Halloween weekend. There goes the family. Today's theme, fittingly, folks, is family. Bobby C. has struggled of late with some of his epic predictions, but in hindsight, we must not judge him, folks. He was simply looking out for the fam. Take, for example, his prediction of the Yankees to come back against the Texas Rangers in the ALCS. Would you stick up for your little brother if he was getting bashed by baseball bats? Or would you sit back and watch the way I did when Festa was just 10 years old? <laughs> the Bombers fell at six last Friday night in Texas. It was like watching Death of a Salesman. Ah, memories of Morticia and I on our first date. Yes, Death of a Salesman. Ah, the Yankees will keep Joe Girardi and the fam. The Bombers and their manager have reached an agreement on a three-year, $9 million contract with incentives that could add another 500000 for winning the World Series, according to sources. Pugsley and Wednesday put Rita down. We can shoot her out of the cannon after the show. Yankees say CC Sabathia will be hanging out with Uncle Fester this offseason. CC will have arthroscopic surgery today to repair a small meniscus tear in his right knee. He will begin a pre-spring training routine three to six weeks after the operation. <laughs> Sabathia went 21-7 with a 3.18 ERA this year, but he posted a dreadful 5.63 earn run average in the playoffs despite a 2-0 record in three postseason starts. The Yanks batted 201 in the league championship series. The ARA was an atrocious 6.58. You can't win in wiffle ball with numbers like that. <laughs> in other Yankee news, the Bombers declined 2011 options on first baseman and DH Lance Berkman, reliever Kerry Wood, and off injured first baseman Nick Johnson. They also exercised their option on pitching prospect Andrew Brackman. The Yanks will likely re-sign Wood for less money. Speaking of family traditions, the wife of Texas Rangers ace Cliff Lee came out this week and said Yankee fans were rude during the ALCS. Kristen Lee said they threw beer in her direction and shouted obscenities. My dear, the Yankee fans are simply trying to recruit you and your husband to the Bronx. You should feel privileged. Welcome to the family. No doubt, the Yanks will court Mr. Lee hard in the offseason. Like a beautiful cabaret of corpses in the graveyard, the San Francisco Giants, who eliminated the defending NL champion Philadelphia Phillies in the NLCS, whipped Cliff Lee in Game 1 of the World Series Wednesday night. It was beautifully delightful. The Giants won 11-7. Matt Cain pitched the Giants to a 9-0 Game 2 win Thursday. He sh <laughs> the series ships to Texas this weekend. From the baseball diamond to the gridiron, where the New York football giants gave new meaning to the phrase, burying them alive. The G-Men trounced Dallas Monday night in Big D. Oh, there goes Tony Romo. 41-35. Big Blue knocked Cowboys QB Tony Romo out of the game with a broken collarbone. Romo will be out for the next six to eight weeks. The Cowboys sitting at 1-5 and five are pretty much dead and buried in the playoff picture. Maybe it's time for Bobby C. to relive images of last season when he called for a giant Jets Super Bowl. The Giants are 5-2, and two, winners are four straight. The Jets are 5-1, and one, winners are five straight. Gang Green, fresh off the bye week, will host Green Bay Sunday at the New Meadowlands. The Giants have a bye week this week before returning next week in Seattle. When they return, the G-Men will be without defensive end Matthias Kiwanuka. He will go from... The sidelines to out for the season, the Giants will place him on the injured reserve list with a herniated disc in his neck. Not only is Kiwanuka's season over, his Giants career could be finished since he is in the final year of his deal. Giants legend Lawrence Taylor is hoping to make a new deal. Taylor was in court this week to meet with attorneys as part of the process. In the criminal case he faces, LT was charged with several counts, including statutory rape after being arrested in a hotel in Suffren on May 6th. That's my boy. He must be an Adams. The Knicks didn't care much about family this week when they released Patrick Ewing Jr. for the second time in the last couple of seasons. Ewing Jr., the son of Knicks legend Patrick Ewing, was waived, and the Knicks decided to keep former first-rounder Sean Williams with the final roster spot. The Knicks also changed things up a bit by announcing rookies Landry Fields and Tim Moskov, starters for Wednesday night's opener in Toronto. The first time two rookies started for the Orange and Blue since Patrick Ewing and Gerald Wilkins in 1985. 
Newly anointed six man Wilson Chandler led the way in a 98 93 win. That's what you're seeing on the screen right now for the Knicks. Scoring 22, star free agent acquisition of Mari Stoudemire didn't disappoint either. He recorded a double double 19 points and 10 rebounds in his Nick debut. The Knicks will be in Boston tonight before returning to the Garden for Saturday night's home opener against Portland. The Knicks are 1 0, and the Nets started their season off with a win. Not too shabby after losing the first 18 straight last season. The Nets defeated Detroit Tuesday night. They host Sacramento tonight. Locally, Fordham QB Blake Wayne went down with injury last weekend, but no worries. Sophomore Ryan Higgins stepped up big for the Rams. He made his varsity start count, leading Fordham football on a last-minute scoring drive at a 14-0 win over Lafayette at Rose Hill. The victory stopped the Rams. Four-game losing streak. Fordham will play Georgetown Saturday at 1 p.m. The Bronx's own Doug Marone has the Syracuse Orange clicking on all cylinders. The former NFL player and coach who was born and raised in Throck's Neck and played high school football from Mount St. Michael in Lehman has guided Syracuse to a 5-2 start. The Orange upset number 20 West Virginia, a two-touchdown favorite last weekend. The Cues take on Cincinnati this weekend in Cincy. For more on Doug Marone, visit DougMarone.com. And on a final sports roundup note, the Mets have hired Sandy Alderson excuse me, as their new GM. Now that's just creepy. Let's hit the C-list and say goodbye to an old friend. As Gomez Adams the thought of the afterlife seems like bliss, but this week we mourn the passing of another New York baseball great, Bill Shannon, the longtime official scorer for the Mets and the Yankees, whose signature voice and mannerisms endeared him to sports writers and sportscasters over the years. He died Tuesday in an early morning fire in West Caldwell, New Jersey. There was no one better than the 69-year-old Shannon at keeping score. He will be greatly missed in the tradition of sports oddities and stats. This one is for you, Mr. Shannon. Benji Molina will get a World Series ring this year regardless of who wins the World Series. Molina was traded to the Texas Rangers on July 1st to make room for top catching prospect Buster Posey. He's been with the Rangers for three and a half months after playing the first half with San Francisco. Thing! Give him a hand! <laughs> He's even a winner when he becomes a loser. I must go now. I hear Morticia cranking up the guillotine. That means it must be Halloween. What bliss. Rest in peace, Mr. Shannon. That's your sports trick or treat. Back